Many uber rares are usually contested for a high ranking in people's zone tier lists. However, one that usually gets swept under the rug is an uber rare from the Almighty's, who even has competition with another uber rare from the same set. But if you saw the title, you already know who I'm going to be talking about. This video is about Almighty Ganesha. Almighty Ganesha, based on the deity of the same name in Hinduism, is an uber rare found within the Almighty set. Compared to most ubers in the set, Ganesha doesn't have any special targeting abilities, but rather simply has the strengthen ability. For the purposes of this video, I will only be discussing Exalted Ganesha briefly and Almighty Ganesha, as the first form has worse stats all around. Exalted Ganesha has a standing range of 400, but his attack is a long distance attack. His LD is between 275 to 725 range. While 400 is his usual standing range, when he gets to the base, his standing range becomes only 275. Most LD units tend to have their base range at the minimum spot for their blind spot. At level 30, he has about 60,000 health and deals around 33,000 damage. However, when he reaches 80% of his health, this damage goes to 50,000 damage. His strength and ability allows him to gain a 50% power boost when his health drops below 80% and since Ganesha has 5 knockbacks, this means that unlike most other strength units, his activates a lot sooner. Ganesha also supports an average recharge time for an uber, this being a minute and 54 seconds. For comparison with another LD unit, Red Riding Mina has a recharge of 1 minute and 37 seconds. While slightly longer, you'll usually get a lot more power out of Ganesha than Mina thanks to his much higher damage output. However, he does have a lower attack frequency than her, having an attack frequency of 9.3 seconds compared to Mina's 6.5 seconds. Some extra notes about Ganesha is that he has a speed of 9, which is comparable to Wushu Cat. He costs 4,350 cents, has a force speed of 2.67 seconds, and a back speed of 3 seconds. Ganesha is also in only one combo, this being a max wallet medium combo, which is only useful if the stage has a ton of enemies that give lots of cash. Remember how in the beginning of the video, I said that Ganesha has competition even in the same set? Well, Aphrodite is the competitor that a lot of people like to compare since both are used for their LD abilities. Mega Aphrodite is much better against aliens since she can deal 122,000 damage at level 30 without treasures and deals even more beyond that. However, the two can be pretty interchangeable depending on what the situation calls for outside of the alien matchup. If you need a sniper unit for stages like Vulcanizer, then Aphrodite is the better choice because of her 600 standing range compared to Ganesha's 400. If you want to have that extra power Ganesha has when range isn't as big of an issue, you could bring him along due to his slightly lower cost. Aphrodite has a longer recharge, being 2 minutes and 11 seconds compared to Ganesha's minute and 54 seconds, but it just comes down to if you need a sniper unit or not between these two. However, this discussion gets flipped on its head when we cover their true forms. Like all of the Almighty's true forms, they are locked behind the Epic Catfruit Seed, which can only be acquired from Gauntlets, the Infernal Tower, and Growing Epic, meaning that you are realistically only going to get these true forms once you're at the very least, post an Ancient Curse. The other fruit Ganesha takes is 5 Green Catfruit. The description in the Catfruit screen states that he gains increased HP and deals more damage when strengthened. When Ganesha is true formed, he gains a 13% increase in his HP and deals 2 times damage when strengthened instead of a 1.5 times increase. Those are the only stat changes Ganesha gets upon true forming. However, true forms can go beyond these usual stat boosts thanks to talents, and this is where Ganesha goes from a pretty good uber to one of the best LD ubers in the game. Ganesha's talents include strengthen, weak and resist, knockback immunity, HP up, and attack up. Before we get into the specifics, here are all of the damage factors when it comes to Ganesha's attack at level 30, 40, and 50. To break down this table, we first have just your standard attack damage. As stated before, his damage doesn't change upon true forming. However, his strength and damage is where the real gold is. Untalented, the strength and ability already allows Ganesha to deal 67,000 damage at level 30. At level 40, this becomes 87,000 damage and at level 50, this goes to 107,000 damage. When Ganesha gets maxed attack talents but no strength talents, the strength attack goes from 67,000 damage to 80,000 damage and at level 40, the strength damage is 104,000 damage and at level 50 is 128,000 damage. Now we get to the strength talent damage boost without an attack talent boost. 
This talent gives Ganesha an extra 50% to his strengthened ability, allowing him to deal 2.5 times more damage when strengthened. At level 30, this allows Ganesha to deal 84,000 damage when strengthened. At level 40, this becomes 108,000 damage and at level 50, becomes 134,000 damage. Lastly, is when we have both a maxed out attack and strength talented Ganesha. At level 30, this allows Ganesha to deal a very impressive 101,000 damage with 10k DPS. At level 40, this becomes 130,000 damage and lastly, is Ganesha at level 50 with both attack and strength talents. This gives Ganesha a staggering 160,000 damage with 17,000 DPS. Other units with a comparable DPS include Untalented Kai, Ragnarok, and Lil Valkyrie. Out of all of the units in the Almighty's that got talents, I think Ganesha got it the best outside of Amaterasu, but we still have a few more to discuss. His HP talents allow a Ganesha at level 30 to go from 67,000 health to 80,000 health. At level 40, HP talents give him 104,000 health and at level 50 gives him 127,000 health. This health increase usually means that Ganesha is able to survive an extra hit or two, which can be very important for late game situations where enemies on average can be dealing damage in the tens of thousands. Weaken Resist is a pretty good talent to get for him, as it allows him to get to his full power state sooner. For example, if Ganesha was attacked by a winged piggy, instead of having to wait for 5 seconds to go full power again, he would only have to wait 1.5 seconds, and thanks to his high knockback count, he wouldn't be attacked by piggy for long. Lastly is his knockback immunity. While this sounds good on paper, as it allows him to have a better matchup against enemies like Mr. Mole, especially due to his somewhat long force swing, however, it removes one of Ganesha's ways to allow him to be repositioned. Ganesha has a below average range for an uber rare, and will probably be one of your main attackers. Because of this, you want to allow Ganesha to be repositioned to a better spot whenever possible, and even then, the need for a knockback immune Ganesha is so situational that this talent is straight up not worth getting. To wrap up what I think of Ganesha's talents, I would say his strength and talent should be your first priority since you can get more out of it than having a simple boost to your attack. Plus, it's much easier to get a strength boost from combos. I would give his strength talent a 4 out of 5 on talents which you should invest into him. Next is his weak and resist talent, which as stated before gives him the ability to get back to his full strength a lot sooner. Since Ganesha has difficulty dealing long lasting damage without his strength boost, being able to shorten the time that is lost is great. I would give this a 3 out of 5. His knockback immunity is something I would actively avoid getting because it will do more harm than good on Ganesha since his range means he needs to have chances to be able to reposition himself without taking massive damage. I give it a 0 out of 5. When a talent gets 0 out of 5 on my talent rating system, it usually means that this is a talent you should never unlock even if you have a ton of spare MP as it can make a unit actively worse. His HP talents give Ganesha extra survivability which is always nice for a unit like him. This is a 3 out of 5 talent. Last is his attack up talent, which like his strength talents, allows Ganesha to punch enemies a lot harder. However, you should only go for these talents once you have his strength maxed out, since you get less out of your Ganesha if you boost this first. However, that extra damage is worth it after you get him strengthened up. This in conjunction makes Ganesha a true beast on the battlefield. I give this talent a 4 out of 5, like his strength talent. Like I said before the start of this section on Almighty Ganesha, it was usually contested that Aphrodite was the better LD Uber in the set. However, Almighty Ganesha challenged that notion by a lot. Part of this has to do with talents. Where Aphrodite got some pretty rubbish talents, Ganesha was blessed with talents that really made him strong. A max talented Ganesha before Strengthen and an Almighty Aphrodite basically deal the same damage outside of aliens, but since one has Strengthen and the other didn't get any attack talents at all, Ganesha can easily outperform Aphrodite, especially since Ganesha already has a 27% more DPS before Strengthen. Ganesha is also a lot beefier, having 30,000 more health than Afro. However, their standing ranges do make this somewhat moot because Afro is attacked less often, but the durability one has over the other is still worth pointing out. At level 50, Aphrodite has 83.7 thousand health, whereas Ganesha has 127 thousand health. In terms of damage, a max talented Ganesha at level 50 deals almost 300% more damage than Aphrodite outside of aliens, where Aphrodite still deals more damage at the same level. Ganesha can pierce from 275 to 725 range, while Aphrodite can snipe from 450 to 850 range. While Afro works better when trying to snipe super backliners, Ganesha is more practical to use since this situation is rare to come across in the late game. On Afro's talents, she got 4 resist talents and a 40% chance to slow aliens. These resist talents being Curse, Wave, Freeze, and Weaken. 
While Curse Resist is nice for enemies like Loris and the Relic Doge base, it won't do much else for you. Wave Resist isn't that good of a talent on a unit like Aphrodite because you can guard her easily with other wave blockers and she will still receive massive amounts of damage from late game waves anyways. Freeze Resist is only good for enemies like Henry and Weak Resist, unlike on Ganesha, isn't too useful on Aphrodite since most of the time Afro is weakened, Afro will be repositioned to an area where she is more safe and has a low attack frequency and her range just means that she will most likely attack once the weakened is over. Lastly, her slow has too low of an uptime, only lasting for 4 seconds and too low of a rate of activation to invest in. If you want me to give a more in-depth rating of Aphrodite, let me know in the comments down below. Aphrodite is still a good uber, but in the late game, it is outshined by Ganesha by a long shot in 90% of late game scenarios. You would want the raw power that Ganesha could bring to the table, even if it might cost some range. To end this review, if I had to give Ganesha a rating out of 10, I would rate him an 8.5 out of 10. Ganesha is one of the most reliable strength users in the game thanks to it activating a lot earlier than most units. Ganesha is also able to hit things extremely hard and has pretty decent bulk. However, his rather long force swing does mean that he can sometimes miss an enemy, especially if they have a short range or extremely fast. Ganesha also has a very underwhelming combo. Ganesha is a unit that proves that you don't need any special targeting in order to be a good unit by virtue of having naturally good stats. So, what is your opinion on Ganesha? Do you think he's a very good uber, or do you think there are much better ubers that can fulfill his role better? Do you agree or disagree with the points made in this, and are there are any that I may have missed? Let me know in the comments down below, and if you enjoyed this video, why not give it a like, and if you haven't already, why not hit that subscribe button for more Battle Cats content like this. Anyways, I hope you have a wonderful day.